Welcome to a chess lecture where you're going to learn 10 most important ideas in Queen's Gambit Accepted and Queen's Gambit Declined openings. The first concept is about Queen's Gambit not really being a true gambit, because White can win the pawn back if he chooses to. It's important, however, to know the following line. If Black accepts the gambit and plays d takes c4, one of the moves that White could play to win the pawn back in the easiest way without any complications is the move e3. We're opening up our bishop in order to attack the pawn. And if Black is choosing to try to hold on to the pawn, they will run into a lot of trouble. After a move like b5, White's main idea here is a4 breaking the black's pawn chain. After black tries to defend the pawn with c6, we have a following trap, takes, takes, and queen move to f3, trapping the rook in the corner. As we go back, if black tries to play the move a6, then they cannot take back the pawn on b5, because the a rook is pinned, and so white has a very, very, very good position. If black decides to take our pawn on a4, then we simply could collect it with a check, take the pawn back on c4, and we have won all the material back. However, we also have a huge central control, lead in development, and just amazing position. Any other attempts to hold on to the pawn, like for example, bishop to e6, white has just a comfortable move, knight a3, which is not necessarily objectively the best, but does win the pawn back right away on the next move. The second concept is regarding the pawn move to e3. Later, if allowed, we would love to push it forward to e4 to develop our dark square bishop outside the pawn chain. We played e3 so that we could win the pawn back without any complications, but we would like to push it if allowed later in the middle game. For example, black plays knight to f6, we take back on c4, pawn to e6, we're playing natural developing moves, knight to c3, and here, if black plays a little bit inferior move, knight to c6, white could get a very, very decent position with e4. That would be the best way to develop the dark square bishop somewhere on this diagonal, and here white is much better due to extreme central control and space. The third concept is about the main means of equalizing for the black pieces in the Queen's Gambit Accepted. Since white has more pawns in the center, it's imperative for black to strike at it as soon as possible. c5 being the most important move in this position. This way, black is equalizing in the central control. However, white is still left with slight lead in development. The fourth concept is about white happily accepting the so-called isolated queen's pawn in this opening after black captures on d4. Here we could take back with the pawn and white is happily to do so because it a opens up their dark square bishop, gives them semi-open e-file for the rook, provides an outpost for the knight on e5, and in general, white could play knight to c3 and pawn to d5 very, very soon. The question is only if he wants to get rid of that isolated pawn and exchange it for the pawn on e6. The fifth idea is an ingenious queen move, which allows the f-rook to be put behind the d-pawn where it will be attacking black's queen. Here, from the first glance, it looks like black can maybe win the pawn on d4 by taking. Here, of course, white shows their idea, bringing the rook to d1 and pinning the pawn. And black, unfortunately for them, cannot hold the pawn back with c5. Here, if we take and take and take and take and play bishop e3, black is going to lose the piece and white will enter objectively winning position. Because after e5, they're unable to take back the bishop on d4 with the pawn as it is pinned. I had numerous games online where I had exactly this position. And if they're not trying to hold to the pawn with bishop to c5 and play something like bishop e7, we now can take with the pawn on d4 
and after we play knight to c3 and d5 in the future white's rook will provide lots of tactical opportunities by discovering the attacks against the black's queen if you're enjoying the video consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach my contacts are on the right now let's move on to top five concepts in queen's gamut declined opening the first concept that I would like to share is how dangerous it is for black to play premature c5. A move that is wanted positionally and strategically to equalize in the central control. But it needs to be better prepared against such setup of whites. For example, here white can take on c5. For example, bishop takes c5. And we have massive pressure against the black center after which white is winning the pawn on d5 be aware of that move c5 and make sure that the tactics work for you in order to equalize it is more recommended for black to prepare this with moves like b6 should be seven knight d7 and then hit with c5 one must know the last curvation in the queen's gambit declined where black plays this interesting idea knight to e4 a weird move for those maybe who don't play at all the queen's gambit but the purpose of this move is to exchange two pairs of minor pieces to alleviate the lack of space problem for black what follows is usually bishop takes e7 queen to e7 and here i want you to remember that it is not recommended for white to take on e4 after knight d2 and f5, black has no problems and is likely slightly better. Black will just fianchetto the bishop, put the knight on d7, and very, very soon, or even on the next move, hit our center with e5. Instead, what white plays is usually just to calm rook c1, and black could either play c6 or exchange that second pair of knights right away. After which, black will be trying to prepare the move c5 like in one of the previous positions by playing b6 knight d7 bishop b7 take on c4 at the right time and hit with this golden move c5 if he could make this tactically work and achieve c5 black usually equalizes at the end many times amateurs place their knights in front of the c-pawn in the queen's gambit stop doing that black is blocking their c pawn which needs to move forward eventually to c6 or c5 to equalize in central control in space now white will always be better due to these reasons just having more pawns that fight for the center for example pawn to e3 bishop e7 knight to f3 castles rook c1 and white's pieces are amazing due to the space we have white is just simply much better in this position and black cannot fully equalize without hitting the white center with the pawn move c5 one needs to remember the idea of not taking with the black pieces on c4 until white's light square bishop has moved to gain an extra tempo for example if black first plays a developing move and like knight bd7 and waits for white to move the bishop we have the following situation bishop to d3 now we take on c4 and the bishop in total has moved twice to get to c4 here black can play the move c5 and it is white to play let's go back and imagine that black takes on c4 without playing the move knight d7 here white's bishop moves only once to take back the pawn on c4 and after knight bd7 we have exactly the same position but without the pawn on c5 so if you're waiting for the bishop to move and then taking on c4 you would win the so-called extra tempo with the black pieces players do not appreciate the bishop on b7 enough because it's blocked by their own pawn perhaps this is not the most amazing bishop in the history of bishops but it's an all right piece pressing down the square e4 which allows black to think of ideas like knight to e4 
Plus the bishop can be opened by taking on c4 if white doesn't change the structure until then. For example, if white castles, black would just take on c4 and now we have the bishop opened. Or we could even continue developing with moves like knight bd7, queen to e2, and now we can utilize the idea knight e4 only because we have that bishop on b7. Here black is fighting for equality very well. If you enjoyed the video, considering hiring me as your personal online chess coach, my contacts are on the right, I will be waiting for your messages. I would appreciate if you put a like on this video or left a comment. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.